Cool. Hi guys, my name is Joe, and I'm the CEO and founder of Navistar Legal. And today we have Bob Sharon, and he is the founder and chief innovation officer of Blue IoT. Welcome, Bob. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming along. And and look, I uh, there was a reason that I specifically asked you because um, you when we when we talked, you had such an enthusiasm for your business and such uh, energy and passion. I was like, this guy, I've got it. I've got to have a conversation with this guy, which is recorded. So today we're gonna we're going to talk a little bit about um, Bob's journey into business. We're going to talk about the, the kind of business that he's in, how he's got there, how things have been over the last couple of weeks, because well, the last time we spoke was a couple of weeks ago, it was at, the, at lockdown, I know you're in Australia, so I'm just curious to find out, and, and some of the philosophies that um, keep Bob going and keep him so enthusiastic in, in such a strange world. So Bob, why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey into, into business. Okay, well, I, I uh, come from uh, an IT background. Um, one of my first jobs uh, going way back was operating an IBM 360, uh, which was ancient when I got there. It was so ancient, in fact, it reads cards. So uh, a lot of the younger generation won't wow. say, what's that? Uh, that's a discussion for another time. Uh, but um, so I had a life of IT, and through IT, I got into data centres. And I got to become a bit of a data center nerd. Uh, and to this day, I judge them globally for fun. I don't get paid for it. I do it for love. Um, but through data centers, um, I learned that they use or have a carbon footprint the size of aviation. In fact, they take around 3% of the world's energy, which is huge, absolutely huge. Mind you, the carbon footprint today, I think aviation shrunk a whole lot. Um, but nevertheless, that led me in uh, to where we are today because I got into smart buildings. I got into sustainability. Uh, so it's a weird way to get into sustainability, but yeah. that's the path I Through the path of IT. <laughs> through the path of data centers because they chewed up so much power and I was focused on how can we improve data centers? How can we make them more energy efficient? Even put together a couple of innovative designs around data centers. Uh, and that led me into sustainable buildings and smart cities and stuff like that. So very weird path. Plus, I was a square peg in a round hole to quote Steve Jobs. Uh, I did not fit the corporate mould. And if you don't fit the corporate mould and you call a spade a spade, they are what's called career limiting moves, which led me into <laughs> three retrenchments. So your career limiting moves, were they what kind of spurred you into the self-employed setting up business world? And then how did you, how did you make that switch? I'm always interested because for me, I thought I didn't need to make a switch setting up in my own. I was like, well, I work in a business, so of course there's no switch to make. But then I realized, oh, big mindset shifts. How did you make that shift from employee to self-employed? Well, when you're an employee and, and you're earning good money, you, you don't think about it because I, you know, when I was in IT, I said, oh, gee, I'm earning good money. You know, I've got some you know, other investment properties and, you know, I'm doing all right. You know, I'm not, what, not rich, but I'm doing fine. Um, and I'm quite comfortable. And that's how I used to think. Um, however, uh, when problems arose within big companies, uh, whether it was to do with customer service or treatment of staff, uh, I'm not one to, uh, to be shy and I would speak up and certain senior people is, did not like that and too bad. So in the end, it was too hard and in effect, after the third retrenchment for doing such things, uh, I, I, I then had to contemplate and think, hmm, what am I going to do? Um, and, um, you know, one uh, mate of mine, I want to say mate, he was in facilities and come from the data centre space as well, uh, from Adelaide, said to me, uh, why don't you do this, this Neighbours training? And Neighbours, you know, for those that don't know, is an acronym for the National Australian Built Environment Rating System. And it measures the energy efficiency of a, of a building or a, or a, a data centre or a place for the last 12 months. So it's not about design, it's about outcome. And he said, why don't you just go do this? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So that, that sounds like fun, you know, and that taught me all about test and measure. And, and as I did that, then 
then that led me in to start uh, another company uh, back in 2012 around, you know, making buildings and data centers more sustainable and making them more energy efficient. And, uh, so I was kind of forced into that. So, you know, it was just a bit of contemplation and, well, I'm not going to fit the corporate mold. So, okay, well, let's see what happens. I might try this. So what do you now, off the back of not fitting them, do you now, like uh, a bit like Steve Jobs used to do, like do you now create jobs for the square pegs or do you, and uh, you know, are you now a collection of square pegs or are you creating, is, does the, is the culture pegless like <laughs> what I mean by that is how does your coach how is the culture of your company now affected by your old experience uh it, it is we're, we're, we're either square pegs or no pegs uh so for me um I basically we're, we're so multicultural not deliberately uh but I take people on the basis of you know how what what's your attitude uh, how capable are you? In other words, have you got the capabilities and how flexible are you? And in the end, what's happening is I'm helping my staff write their own job descriptions because I don't want to force people into a particular, you know, uh, place like big companies do. You get a job, that's your job description, you go into that corner, that's it. You want to have ideas, and I always used to have ideas about doing you know, other things, even in those big companies, but mostly they, they, they didn't listen. Uh, and that was hard. Uh, whereas now I want people to be happy and productive. Uh, so they're all smart, uh, right attitude, and, and, and we're all focused on outcomes. You know, that's internally and predominantly for our customers, of course, because we're nothing without our customers. And so I have the attitude of, I want my staff to be happy. So we'll, we might get them to try a few different things, you know, within a few different areas, and I want them to excel. So I'm kind of helping them write their own job descriptions and we have one highly discriminatory policy. Like it's everyone's ears flapping here. If you haven't got a sense of humour, you cannot work for Blue IoT. That is fundamental, right? <laughs> you can't have fun and you can't get around, well, what's the point? Why are we working? I mean, really, right? So we choke around the office a lot. We have a lot of fun. We're very flexible. You know, if people, you know, work late or they're doing other stuff, they come in at 10. Yeah, so what? Big deal, you know. Um, we're totally flexible. And uh, that's, that's the kind of environment we have. So I think we're all square pegs. We're all weird. Uh, but it doesn't matter, you know. It, it's about just enjoying and... But the productivity levels are through the roof. I was going to say, is it a secret to success? What is your secret to success? Because you guys are doing, you know, pretty well right now. And, and I... What is it that, that you would, if you boiled it all down, what's, what's the secret sauce? What's the, what's the mystery to it? Okay, you, you, you asked for this one. All right. you, you opened a can of worms on this. Um, firstly, in my former business, uh, I thought the key to success was me. My ideas, uh, my way of doing things. I didn't even have advisors uh, in my former business. Uh, today... I've actually got my big boss upstairs, right? I've, I've got a higher being, our creator, my God. And, Amazing. and a whole bunch of great advisors. I've got some fantastic advisors now and adding more to the business. So I consult them. And so I, you know, I've got something much greater than myself. And with all of that, oh, gee, you know, totally different to before. Totally different. It's just fantastic. So I've got enough energy to sink a few Titanics. <laughs>